Hey guys, welcome to episode 12 of my community fishing waters and lakes and ponds in Phoenix. We're in Scottsdale today at the Chaparral Lake. It's around 6.30 a.m. on Monday, July 19th. We're going to go get set up and get the poles in the water and we'll check in once we're there. Okay, we're getting set up over here. Pretty much right in the middle. Just after you walk up here on the pathway. There was some a tree here and a bench. There'll probably be some, it's overcast now, but this tree ought to provide some shade soon. Got the rod holder in. We're gonna get ready to set up the catfish pole. I'm gonna start with some of the bluegills I caught from uh, over at Kiwanis. So Chaparral Lake is a 10 acre lake. It's one of the bigger ones, almost the size of Kiwanis. It's just longer and a little bit narrower. It uh, says it's got a maximum depth of 15 feet. So that's probably more out on the edges here on this side, on the right and on the left. It doesn't seem that deep straight out from where I'm at, so I'll probably move around a little bit. My goal is to spend around three hours here and then head over to El Dorado Lake, or pond, sorry, El Dorado Pond, which is only a few miles away since I'm in Scottsdale. I'll try to get both of these lakes in today. That's why I got an early start here at 6.30 in the morning. Plus, maybe I'll have a better chance of catching some fish if I'm here a little earlier. So, I'm going to start with the original chatter bait here first thing in the morning. See what we get up along the wall. I think it might be a while on the catfish pole that's in just because that bluegill was frozen. So, give it some time to thaw out there and we'll see what happens. Gonna give it about another 10-15 minutes in this location location one haven't had any anything yet so I've seen movement in the water there it is again I see little things coming up minnows and things hitting and some definitely there's movement going on things happening so I'm gonna try this swim shad here and then probably here in about 10-15 minutes we're just going to move down here around the corner here to the next bench, next green bench. Set up there and, and try again. Uh, my goal is to probably hit like three spots out here before we call it. Try to get in a few hours. Maybe get lucky. If we can get a fish. Before we go over to El Dorado. If we uh, aren't having any luck at all with the, the lures like we've been not having luck, I may go ahead and just throw a chickpea on this one or something and throw it out with this uh, cut bait. Have one catfish pole and one uh, carp pole out for a little while. But I'm really like wanting to catch a bass right now. Hey guys, it's just after 7.30. I moved over here to the north side of Chaparral Lake on uh, Monday, July 19th. So nothing happened over there in the middle on this side, just over here. We did about an hour there. I had no action at all. It's been kind of the story of my trips, guys. Sorry. Trying if I can. Uh, put the uh, bluegill back out right here in the middle. I went ahead and uh, just cut them in half and just using half the bluegill this time over here now that he's completely thawed out. I'm gonna start with this uh, swim shad since that's what I had on. We had a slight little sprinkle when we got over here and then it stopped. We were hitting like a lot of algae or moss over there trying to go through the water. So I'm hoping maybe a new spot might be a little different. We'll see. This is another park I've never fished, but I've passed it a few times and always wanted to come out here. So it's nice to finally get out here and fish all these community lakes and ponds. I haven't, 
other than Tempe Town Lake, um, I have not fished any of these before. I actually was unaware that Tempe Town Lake was even part of the community fishing program uh, until I started doing this. So I guess I just thought it was like a regular lake. I assumed they were all small ponds until doing this and realized there's actually quite a few pretty big ones out there. Obviously Tempe Town Lake being the biggest. But there's definitely quite a few places to fish out here in, like, Metro Phoenix. Seems like there's a park close to everyone, depending where you live. Feel free to comment down below, too. I'd like to know your guys' experience, if there's a local park you guys go to, what kind of luck you've had, you know. Maybe uh, we can meet up when I get to that park. Oh, something right there. Maybe that got on video. Just popped right out of the water. Decent size. Probably a carp. It's now around 8 a.m. I'm over here on the north side of Chaparral Lake. Haven't had any luck again with any of my lures. I'm going to take a little bit of a break off the lures for a second. I do have a piece of cut um, bluegill out here on my big catfish pole. I've had no action yet on that. I went ahead and put in another rod holder um, and a bungee cord here to hold it in. Uh, this is my 10 pound braid. I did end up catching a carp on this pole over at Tempe Town Lake. So it's the only other one I have with me. I didn't bring my other heavy duty pole. Well, actually it's in the truck, but I didn't bring it out here. So got a bell on there. It's got one uh, chickpea and one corn on it on a number two bait holder. Uh, I saw some movement through here. A couple fish came up. I think they were carp. So I'm going to take a few minutes and sit here and observe and watch. Uh, if something happens, I will we'll turn the camera back on. We're only going to be staying at this south side for about five more minutes. So nothing yet on the poles. And fish, a big fish keeps popping up over here on this side, right in this general area. So I figured. While I wait here for a few minutes before uh, before we go to the other side, to the south side, we're on the north side of the lake right now. There's Hayden. Hayden goes right here. Chaparral's behind me, so we're gonna go over to the corner that's on the corner of uh, Chaparral and Hayden, which is the uh, south side, for about an hour here in a minute. I moved over to the south side of the lake for the last hour here at Chaparral. There's a sitting area here in the front, a cement sitting area with a bar going across. The restroom's right there. Here's the main parking lot. And then over here on this side is Chaparral. And then right across the lake is Scottsdale Road. I'm sorry, Hayden Road. So um, I went ahead and just set up the poles I had, the catfish pole. I just put bacon on it this time since I wasn't having any action on the cut bluegill. And then over here we put a couple pieces of corn and a chickpea on for the uh, carp pole here. Because when I walked up I did see a few, I saw a carp come up and go right down in this general area right along the edge here. So, um, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to cast with this bar in the way. Uh, originally I was going to go over to this side and there was somebody fishing at the only bench over there that I wanted to use. And uh, now it looks like he might have left. Yeah, he's still over there for now, so there was really nowhere else to set up where I could put my stuff over there. So just decided to hit here. We'll just do the waiting game. Uh, we'll try some of these out, see if we get anything. Well, we're wrapping it up here at Chaparral. Didn't get anything. One little bite on the, on the uh, carp pole, but no luck other than that. So having a bad time nowadays, guys. Can't catch anything. But we're going to head over to El Dorado Pond. It's about three miles away. It says about ten minutes down the road, so... We're going to head over there. I'll see you guys once we get to El Dorado. Just after 9.30, Monday, the 19th of July. We're over here at our second uh, community park today. This is El Dorado Pond in Scottsdale. This morning we were over at Chaparral. Didn't have much luck. We're going to come over here and set up a small little pond here. And uh, we'll see if we can get anything here. We're now set up here at El Dorado in Scottsdale. <clears throat> Looks like this... 
might be a couple of ponds here. I think this is pond one, and I think there's another pond on one side or the other. I'll have to check. There's a pond behind me, but it says no trespassing. Looks like it's private property. Um, I may try to see where the other pond is or see how things go here. Um, I put the bacon in. Uh, already getting a few little teeny weeny knocks. I don't know if that's the wind or turtles or whatnot. Let's see. Tighten it up a little bit. I think that's just the wind. I'm going to start with a gold spinner. I've had no luck for a while now, so I'm just going to throw a spinner. I've brought the soft plastic um, bait caster pole. Oh, i got to probably tighten my drag up on this now that I think about it. I had the uh, this in for carp. Yeah. Not to be too loose. So we'll see if we have any more luck here. The catfish bowl, pole, the bacon was gone. It had a few little teeny tugs, not enough to even set off the bell. So I was kind of worried about that. I think I have seen a couple small turtle heads popping up out there in the middle. So I went ahead and cut the uh, one of my bluegills and, and uh, put the head on there really well. So. I don't think they'll be able to get that off very easily, but we'll see. Looks like it's already starting to get a teeny little tug here on that head. So I think we got turtles again jacking with it. So we'll keep an eye on it. It's always been kind of the issue at some of these parks. The turtles get in the bait before the catfish find it. So I'm going to stick with this soft plastic worm since nothing else has worked for me and uh, I've never caught anything with one so if I'm not catching anything might as well practice using a, a, a worm so I got kind of a wacky worm set up here trying to figure out the best way to use it if you guys are seeing me do this and you're like uh, dude you're totally doing it wrong or I got it set up wrong and honestly, any of you guys that would ever love to come out with me, I know I go during the weekdays, maybe some of you work during the weekdays, or sometimes I'll go night fishing. Um, I'd love to get with somebody that can maybe teach me a thing or two, especially about how to catch bass, since I do not know how to do it very well. I've caught them, but I feel like it's by mistake. I mean, I'm trying to catch them, but it's pure luck, typically. And they're usually small. That's probably a sign that I'm getting the stupid immature ones and not the more mature bass. They're smart enough not to bite my stuff because I'm not doing it right, probably. I feel like bass is definitely more of a, a finesse, finesse game, so. And my problem is sometimes I'm lazy when I fish. Not like the rest of you guys. I know you guys aren't lazy when you fish. You're probably all busting it hard. I get kind of lazy. Fishing's always better when you have company. Uh, just saw a fish jump way over here. So I don't know what it was, probably another carp or something. I'm gonna go with a swim shad, take a break from the wacky worm. still see movement along the walls as if there's like some bait fish there. I'll try running this really close to the wall through where those 
little swirls are coming up. Oh, shit! Oh, did you guys hear that? That was a big hit on the catfish pole. Took drag and everything. That's on a, it's on the bluegill head. It hit and dragged and then stopped. That was a cat, definitely. He hit it pretty hard. Dang it, he took some drag, but he came off. I don't think he was able to get the head off of there. Oh, it's going again, it's going again, it's going again. It's going again. I think he's on there. I think we got him. I think we got him. We might not get skunk today. This is on a this is on a bluegill head. This is the first um, first fish I've caught or I'm gonna try to catch with my new pole here, my new catfish pole. So I've got 30 pound braid with a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader on it, and I believe it's a number seven or a 10 um, octopus hook. So offset. He doesn't feel very big, but I've never caught anything with this pole, so... And it doesn't... He's not really fighting too much just yet. Let me see. Oh, it's a cat. It's a nice one. Decent cat. Let's see if we can land him. Oh, he's a decent guy. Oh, yeah. He's starting to fight now. I don't know if he's tired out just yet. And I thought that head would work better than the bacon try to keep those guys out there. It's a decent cat. Let's see if we can get him in here and got to get a weight measurement on him. We know this net weighs 0.9 and uh, the biggest one we got so far out of these ponds was 26 inches so and about seven pounds. Let's see if we can get this guy over here. He looks like a decent size one. Come on. I need to start bringing my bigger net. Oh he swam right out of there. Come on. Uh, see if we can get him this time. Keeps turning around. Nope, oh, come on. Uh, get in there. We got him. We got him, guys. All right, let's see what we got. Finally. Right on the... Right on the, uh, the side lip here with the... Uh, bluegill head. That's why I was trying to catch bluegills over at Kiwanis. They work great for, for catfish. Oh, we lost the head. Let's see if we can keep that. Maybe we can reuse it. Yeah, he's got a nice hook here right in the side of the mouth. Perfect hook here. Oh, come here. It's always the fun part, getting the hook out. Come on, stay in there. There we go. We got it. Let's see. He doesn't feel as heavy as the other guy, but we'll get a quick weight on him. Let's see. The so last time we used this and we weighed the net, the net was uh, 0.9 pounds, so we can subtract the 0.9 from the weight here. Alright, let's see. Get in there. we got here guys oh, nothing why isn't it working something's not working here kind of got jacked up on me for some reason all right I think it's working now let's try it now Let's see what we got here so it's a four pounder basically almost four pound Catfish. We get a length on. He seems kind of long. Yeah, it's a nice channel. Thought he would put up a little more of a fight. Let's get the little tape measure here and see. While he's settled down, we got him in the shade here, right at the tip there. 25 inches, so he's almost as long as that seven footer. But the seven footer, I only seven pounder, I only measured to the center of the tail, so he might have been a little bit longer. But here you go, guys. Nice cat. Nice channel here. Say hello. 
finally got something with the new pole too. All right, let's get this guy back out there. All right. Oh, he was ready to go. Okay. Well, that's a decent catfish. That's right at 11 a.m. here over at El Dorado. We just landed that four pound channel catfish on my new catfish pole, so with a uh, bluegill head. I put the head back on and uh, threw it back out there a little bit different. I had it over here on this side and I threw it over here to this side. I'm probably gonna stay on this side for about another 10 minutes or so. And then I'm gonna move over here to the uh, south side and try to give that an hour here till about 12, 12.30. So let me throw a few here more with the swim shad and then uh, we'll see how it goes. Finally, we finally got something. Thought he would have put up a little more of a fight than that, but maybe it's just so hot today. He was tired, wanted to get it over with. I'm now set up kind of towards the middle, definitely more south than I was before, closer to the south side. This way I can cast over into this area, and get the catfish pull out towards the middle a little bit better. And this area has a lot more shade than the corner does right now. So being that it's starting to get really hot, I pick this area right here. So this way we can swap some areas to cast back and forth. I'm going to start with this soft plastic little wacky worm setup. We got the other half of the uh, bluegill on there. When I tried pulling in the uh, bluegill head over there to move, it was getting fought with on the way in. And I think it was turtles were, were chewing away at it. So <clears throat> this one looks like it just got another slight little bump. So we'll see. I usually typically like to leave the line a little more looser than that, but the turtles are really whacking away at it. So we'll see. Let's go with the soft plastic here. Try to spend about an hour over here on this side. Decided to go with this little spinner, small chatter kind of bait, um, buzz bait kind of thing. Give this a shot here. Pretty shallow on this side, on the uh, left side of me. I'm going to try the right side and then do the left side. And then I think I might want to try a swim bait. I'm just worried I'm going to get hooked up on the bottom. No action yet on the catfish pole. It seemed like when I first put it in, it got a few little, like, turtle tugs. But nothing on the soft plastic worm, except for I got hung up in the shallower area. I appreciate all the support and all the views, everyone. I'm really enjoying making these videos. I wish I was catching more um, more fish, but uh, I said in the very first one, whether I catch fish or not, I'm still gonna post it. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I, sometimes you just go out and it's just not your day. I feel like I'm throwing everything I can at them. I'm not the greatest bass fisherman I wouldn't even say I'm a good one so but I'm gonna keep trying see if I can get better anyway, I was just getting ready to pack up just after 1220 I was just sitting here finishing my water took off my um, chest strap that holds the camera and then my catfish pole just got a really good tug on it and stopped so I'm waiting to see if there's anything else gonna happen with it. Alright guys. That's gonna do it for this episode. Wrapping up today from Chaparral and this is El Dorado. Wrapping up episode twelve I believe. Stay tuned for our next one. We'll be out in Mesa well, we're going to be going to Riverview, I believe, on Wednesday if weather permits. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.